Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. Here on May 7th of 2023, we found this beautiful young lady out collecting some wood fiber in the wild. She is one of our beneficial native wasps here in upstate Indiana, in the northeast of the USA, called the Polistes fuscatus, or northern paper wasp. And we decided to follow her back to see where her nest was. She got ready with a load of wood fiber, and she flew it right over here to the barn eaves. So we were able to find out where she was building her brand new nest. This nest was just begun in the last day or so. So we'll get to watch this nest and document its growth throughout the 2023 wasp season. She's one of several that are setting up nests here on our property. And we're going to follow her on a series. And we're going to watch her nest develop from eggs to larva to the first brood of female workers who will be born and help her maintain and grow the nest all the way through the summer and fall months when the reproductive males and the new queens will be born. It's always a lot of fun to watch a nest develop throughout the season and we'll keep you updated as it goes along. In the meantime for today we're going to let you just watch how she begins a brand new nest and show you what those processes look like and what she's actually doing here in this footage. In this clip she's actually constructing three or four cells simultaneously. She's working on each one of them getting the edges of the cells built up so they're tall enough to house the brand new eggs that she will put inside them. And each cell will have one egg in it. That's how these wasps operate. They put one egg in each cell and that egg will grow into a larva and that larva will then grow into a pupating wasp and it will cover its cell with a silk cap like a silkworm weaves silk Baby wasps do the same thing. They will cover their cell eventually with a silk cap, and that's what they pupate inside. And when they come out, they'll be an adult wasp. They'll chew their way out of that silk cap, and they'll join the foundress as an adult wasp. And once that occurs, that first brood of female workers that are born here, they will help her build out the nest even further, and they will help her bring in food, and this will allow the queen or the foundress to focus more on laying eggs and maintaining the nest rather than going out and doing all the foraging. But for now, in these first couple of weeks of the nest, before there's any helpers born, all the work is done by this single queen, or foundress as they're called, and she puts in a ton of work, so she goes through a lot of energy. In order to survive all of this intense work, she'll have to go out and forage for nectar for herself, and we'll show you what that looks like. And as it gets bigger and heavier, this nest, she will make the stalk or the petiole, which you see attached to the barn roof, even stronger. And she'll make that as strong as it needs to be to hold up the weight of the nest as the nest gets bigger. Take a look at her antennas as she works. The antennas are the main sensory organs that allow her enough input to make each cell very uniform. As she flies off to collect more wood fiber and get nectar for the nest, we can show you what the eggs look like here in the cells. She'll always deposit just one egg in the cell. Typically it'll be attached to the side of the cell wall as opposed to being in the very bottom of the cell. She'll also deposit water droplets into the cells which are the other two little round globes you see attached to the side of the cell wall. And this is done for evaporative cooling effect because in the hot weather it's very important to keep the nest cool so it can survive. And these water droplets that she puts inside each cell the evaporative cooling will actually drop the temperature inside the cell by several degrees. She'll also deposit small drops of nectar inside the cells to allow her to have something to eat when she needs energy. A lot of people don't realize that wasps actually create their own version of honey, just like bees. After they collect nectar, they'll regurgitate that nectar into the cells of their nest so that they have something to eat. And that is actually a form of honey. Here you see she's returned with a ball of wood pulp and she's going to start applying that to the edges of this cell that she's working on now. You'll notice that this paste is sort of squeezed between her mandibles and you can see the dark moist paste on the edge of the cell and she'll work that all the way around the cell until it dries. It will dry into the same strong lighter colored material that you see on the rest of the nest and it dries very quickly so she works pretty fast here. The material she creates from this collected wood fiber mixed with her own saliva and regurgitated fluids is very similar to paper mache. 
If you've ever worked with paper mache yourself, or you've had children maybe in elementary school who would work on that in their projects in art class, then you may already know what a great material this paper mache like paste is. The paste that wasps can create ends up being very strong, very lightweight, and has great thermoregulation ability due to the way it weaves together and allows airflow. And like any wood product, if it's left undisturbed, it'll last forever. You might even notice on your own property, an old wasp nest will stay there for season after season unless you move it. Here's some footage of a different northern paper wasp, just to give you an idea of what they look like when they're out collecting nectar. Out in your neighborhood, you may see your own local wasps doing this. If you do, don't poison them. Don't be afraid of them. They're not doing anything wrong. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do in this environment, and they will help you control all of the pest insects in your property. So just don't panic. If you see them outside, if they're next to you in the garden while you're working, don't worry about it. They belong there and they won't hurt you. They're not aggressive towards humans unless you physically attack them. To supplement the nectar that the wasps may find in the wild, we also leave out some bees' honey so that the wasps can come down and get a drink of that whenever they need to for energy. It's fun to have kind of a wasp feeder set up throughout the summer months. It allows you to really observe them up close. And it's a nice way for wasps and people to interact and become acclimated towards each other. So stay tuned for updates on this nest. We'll be making it into another little series that will follow throughout this season in 2023. As always, thanks for being here. Have a good one.